Hey boys, Adachi here, and we are going to take a look real quickly at kind of a bit of this Christmas stuff that we have going on right now over in the JP side, just so uh, we can go over a few predictions as well as uh, kind of what to expect if we do happen to get the event. Once again, no confirmation, but I'm starting to lean even further into the fact that we will probably be getting this, uh, this event here. But first, we're going to take a look at the rates here and the rate up, I'm sorry, not on the tickets. <laughs> the tickets, there's no rate up on that, but on the banner here, on the banner here, we do have a standard 0.5% on Theria. And then if we take a look over at the arc, 0.833%, so standard rate ups here. Now, this is gonna upset some people, of course, but I think whenever it comes to paid anything, this is always going to upset people. We get the regular tokens here on the regular banner. And if we take a look over here at the new paid banner, this is not a step up, but this is going to be paid gems only. As we can see right here, you're going to get these little tokens right here. And I believe you get one for every summon. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the shop and what you can get with these summons here. Uh, do feel, I guess, a little better at the fact that these rates do not actually increase with the paid banner it's only for these little tokens here so this is going to be some uh, some whale bait here and it is some really good whale bait for you whales out there but uh, at least I guess rejoice in the fact that you're not gonna get any boosted rates here the only thing you will get boosted is the uh, the soul count and then the ether percentage for the on banner Christmas stuff right here and let's see here this is the one thing I want to look at uh, kind of the same thing as when I did the secret of mana collab over in JP I have no idea what this ticket does but we get a few of these and they also give us some other regular limited time tickets that are not these Christmas special ones so I'm gonna go ahead and click it and we're gonna just do a pull real quick and see what the hell it gives me all right skipping past that starting off rare and okay so this ticket it's so weird it's different than the regular limited time tickets, but there's nothing special about it. I don't know if it gives you... There's no boosted rates either, I don't think. If I take a look at the probability rates, everything is... Yeah, everything is even across the board. So yeah, still no clue what those Christmas tickets do. But that's that. Uh, we're going to take a look at the shop real quick just so we can go over the rest of that banner. Now don't quote me on it, the translations are really off for a lot of this stuff that I've been trying to translate here for a bit. So it might not be a one-to-one -one every paid pull is one token, but I think it's safe to assume that it is. But here we're going to be able to exchange these tokens here for things like this piece of gear, which also consequently changes the new Limited Theria's skin. So she's actually going to have this little black Santa outfit instead of the red one when she has this equipped. And you're also going to be able to buy a fuck ton of souls. Now, the thing is with all limited units, at least I believe it's been every limited unit so far, you cannot actually change these souls into the character. So any of you whales or any of you kind of dolphins out there don't think that if you don't pull Theria that you're actually going to be able to trade these tokens in for the souls and then trade for the unit itself. Not going to work that way. These are only for, you know, the uh, SC costs and the uh, awakenings. You can also trade for a bunch of clusters, a bunch of tier 5 uh, enhancement materials, as well as pretty much an infinite amount of XP and uh, gold if you want to do that as well. So this is pretty good, and we're going to take a look at this piece of gear here real quick once I translate it. But over the base stats, we have int plus 72, MP plus 15, defense 47, and then mine plus 60. And it says here, when equipped to the Santa Theria, it will change her skin. It says dark magic attack plus 20% and greatly reduced mind with probability. So kind of the same thing as one of her passives already, only this is also going to improve dark damage by, uh, or dark magic damage, I should say, by 20%. So you can then kind of build her as a dark mage. And I believe this passive is actually going to work on anybody. But don't... <laughs> Don't quote me on that. This might actually only be for Sacred Theory as far as uh, the passive goes. And then we have 10% Ice Resist, 10% Dark Resist, and no status ailment stuff there. So this skin is a paid skin. Very short and simple. And if we are correct, if we take a look back at this again, let's see here. If it is a one-to-one, -one, you know, one token for every summon, that means it's going to take five of these pulls. That means about 50 summons in order to get the skin. So that means if we go ahead and convert the cost here. But I think this is also uh, a big incentive. And I think a good step in the right direction for incentive for whales. As far as the game profiting into the future. Now this is a pretty good piece of gear. But at the same time it's not necessary. Alrighty. But then taking a look back at the rest of the event shops here. It looks like we have... 
a machine weapon. Uh, 75 strength, defense plus 10, mind plus 10, and then uh, it adds a stunning effect onto it as well. So this can go ahead and help you stun some enemies. Once again, you can exchange for five more of these limited tickets here. No idea what these tickets are. They're so weird. Maybe they're just tickets with a probability of pulling the Christmas stuff. It's confusing. It's confusing. Anyway, <laughs> 20 tier 3s of each color. You get 10 of the rainbow tier 3s, 40 of all these tier 2s, and standard 100 for these tier 1s, as well as some gold here at the bottom. And then the second part of the event shop as well, you're going to get two more tickets. Let's see this little reindeer antler thing. This is an accessory with 10 defense, 10 mind, and it says during a mountain battle strength plus 10%. So in a mountainous region, I would guess that's kind of... Odd. Although they've been doing some kind of odd things too, including the arc that we're going to go over in a little bit. And nothing else really to it. So this is actually kind of a, I mean, overall, just pretty much a shitty accessory. Which uh, is going to lead me into my prediction. We're getting one cluster of each color. Is there even a rainbow cluster in this? No, no rainbow cluster here. And starting from the bottom, we have some, I don't know, a bunch of tier, what are those, tier 3s, right? 10 tier 4s. 30 tier 1 crystalline, 15 of the tier 3s each, and that's it. There's not even rainbow clusters here. And the shops are the one thing that are really leading me to believe that we're going to get this on the global side. Because honestly, these rewards, as far as like most events have been going in JP, these rewards are kind of shitty. So I feel like they're kind of scaling back the rewards there. Because of the fact that this will be an equalized event between JP and global, I just feel like we'll be getting it a week later. So that way they can still throw out the Rommel banner and they can still kind of keep our units releases on schedule yet still kind of push us forward to help us catch up with JP just a little bit. Alrighty and before we go into that bit at least uh, let's look over these point rewards real quick. We have garbage. I don't know what these potions are for. I think these are like event orb potions. Got a bunch of are these tier ones or tier twos. I don't even remember because I don't farm them anymore. We get one more of the Christmas tickets. Looks like some more of these little energy potions. Some XP pots. 30 tier ones we got another limited time summon ticket so that is just a standard ticket 15 each of these tier twos some more of these i'm gonna i'm gonna really assume these are event orb recover potions another limited ticket some more xp pots let's see here we get a little reindeer suit this time around all right it looks like this is going to give you 70 defense 30 mind it says it's for males only to equip and it says that it increases movement speed and grants beast type i don't know if that's actually going to change your typing to beast type or if it's going to give you beast killer if it gives you beast killer this is awesome if it just changes your type to beast then i, I still don't really understand what those typing changes are for but you know there's that that's an okay piece of gear at least it's at least it's good to see more gear especially if we are going to get this event on the global side because the more gear the better for when tower comes after all you're going to be able to run a cap of 12 people so more gear is very good to have it looks like we have some gold a skill book a magic book one more of these christmas tickets 100k zell gold i always forget if it's called zell <laughs> xp bots some more event orb potions this is actually this is actually a lot of point rewards to go through good lord i mean they're not all that great but this is a lot of rewards to go through we get one key some more potions we get one cluster of each it looks like some more potions uh more tickets good lord and 30 mother souls one ethereum now as far as the event is structured i have no idea what this little screen is here looks like maybe tower defense or something something involving tweeting i'm not really going to go too deep into that if we get it we get it if we don't we don't now this is an awesome thing right here that i want itis to implement in every event with every units possible going forward in jp and then bringing that over the same way over to the global side so this is actually kind of just a character test uh little trial thing uh, you're not supposed to be m actually clearing it but some people in jp have actually already cleared this and if it's any other bigger indication this is a apparently some boss with almost infinite hp it seems like and it only gives you 60 crystals so but it's, it's really just to take a look at the unit and try them out, and they actually let you go over everything. So going over the arc and its unique passive at max level, it is going to reduce dark damage by 10%, give you some HP regen on all allies, and it says uh, condition abnormality resistance plus. So it looks like it's going to help uh, whoever this is equipped to, it's going to help resist some of those status ailments. Going over the skills we can learn here, not sure what this is called, but this is uh, very reminiscent of the Secret of Mana SR arc where it has the real-time implement, uh, implementation, so 
At night time, this is going to increase the power of light magic by 10%, so this is going to be really good to stack this ability at a low cost onto somebody like Santa Theria. Obviously only going to be useful at night time, but still that's going to be pretty insane just because of all the boosts she has. Here we're going to have uh, MP up... is that really one? Yeah, MP up one I guess? No, okay. I thought that translation was weird. This is MP up three. MP up three here, fellas. Okay. Uh, this one says quick trigger. I don't know if we have this in global yet, so I don't know exactly what this is. It says restore one SCT for one of your uh, skills at the start of the battle. So at the start of every wave, it's going to recover one... I would assume one charge for every skill. Or maybe it's going to restore all the charges for one random skill. Not sure. Wording is weird on that. We're going to get Stardust Teal, Shining Zoak, and then Illumination here at the bottom. This one again, translation, both on Ultima and here is weird. Six attribute wall magic lasting 30 seconds. So my guess is that it is some kind of magic resistance barrier that you can cast for that's going to last for 30 seconds. And then it says one at random takes itself every 10 seconds. So uh, if I get <laughs> if I get a better translation, I'll go ahead and post it in the description. Or if somebody wants to feel free and correct me in the comments below, feel free. Very much appreciate it. And then we're going to take a look at its ether item real quick because she does actually have this equipped right here. Nothing in too insane, but it is still pretty good. It's going to give you 20 MP. Let's see here, 24 ints, 24 mines, and then it is going to revive you once when you die. And it says HP greatly recover. I'm going to assume that means it's going to fully restore you. So once during battle, it's going to completely revive you. That's pretty, pretty goddamn good, actually. And then going over Santa Theria, we kind of already went over her before, but now we can go over her in a little more depth. It looks like her S1 is just going to be a uh, light AoE damage at a range. Her S2 is going to be uh, another range, but this one's going to be an ice AoE attack. And then the good ones here that she has is her S3. This is going to be a light AoE uh, attack around herself, as well as it's going to boost the strength for all of your allies. So this is really cool. I don't think we have a lot of units that actually involve a lot of buffing in their uh, natural skills. And then her S4, it says a powerful continuous attack of light attribute to the all of your enemies. So AoE, light, magic damage, and it's going to recover the SCT of all allies. So that's cool. It's going to help uh, everybody get their skills back up. And it's going to be uh, probably a pretty solid nuke because she seems like a pretty solid light mage so far. And then here to clarify on her passives, her first passive increases the strength of light magic by 20% and then again greatly reduces mind at a uh, percentage or a chance to greatly reduce mind. And then her second passive, Heartful Presence. At the beginning of battle, allies will be gaining four random buffs. The translation on this is still weird, so... <laughs> now I don't know if it gives everybody four random buffs or what. I don't know. All that I know is that that is still pretty, uh, very RNG based, but still seems like a pretty decent passive to get. And then going over her abilities, we have Galaxy, Shining Zoak, Magic Castle, this full shelter ability that we were trying to translate before. Seeing it right next to Magic Castle is really making me lean into the fact that this is going to be a 20% physical damage reduction to all allies. Just because, you know, they're pretty much the same icon, so I'm going to assume this is physical damage, not just all damage in general. And then these ones are a little more interesting here. We're going to get... what's this ability called? I believe it's called Critical Shift? Critical Shift, Critical Feather, the AoE crit buff here. We're going to get Haste, so... Cool. You can uh, get haste in her kit. This is Holy Wall, so it reduces the dark damage to all allies. We get advanced magic circle. But the really big, big one here, and don't translate this in blue stacks. It has some, <laughs> this is a very naughty translation, but this is Grand Brave, and this is going to be a 35% strength buff for an ally. So this is going to be the power creep version of our standard Brave, bringing it to 35% instead of 20 and then the passive she's going to get is going to be MP up 2, 3, magic up 2, and is this magic up max? Yeah, it looks like magic up max, silence nil, I believe. This is going to be light critical, light attack raise, pose of honor, high magic chance, and then here is that, uh, that staff high boost or high staff boost, whatever it's called. And after taking another look at it, it is going to be boosting physical damage by 10% and then magic damage by 20% when equipped with a staff. So not just intelligence and strength, but the actual damage itself. So this is a, this is a really insane passive to have on a mage at least. 
and that is both the units and the banner. If we do get this over on the global side, would I recommend you pull for this? Yeah, I would recommend you pull for this. This is going to be one of the better mages that we're going to get, but if you already kind of have solid mages, you don't exactly need her. But she's also very cute, so there's that. <laughs> All right, and now we're going to go into the trial real quick here just to kind of test her out. Looks like we get three minutes to try this out. Oh, and everything is already ready. So I want to try this S3 immediately. Oh, and Randy died, so I don't even get to test the buff at all. Let's see her S1. There is that. She's throwing the gift out. There's the snowman, the ice attack right there. She throws snowballs for her basic attack. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Alright, and then we get the S4. I want to see the SCT boost, though. That's the big thing for me right now. I want to see how much it exactly increases. Ooh, that's not bad, actually. That's pretty good. And it looks like her skills recover pretty quickly. Let's test this spell out right here. Ooh, very interesting. If I don't die here, at least. So, as a clarification, it looks like I'm wrong. This does just say all damage reduction. This does not say physical damage. That's pretty insane. That is, once again, another power creep ability right there. Unfortunately, we can be interrupted still. She doesn't have a... What's it called? A mobile object? A movable object? So, let's hopefully get one cast of Zokov. I just want to kind of see the damage here. Obviously, this isn't going to be an optimal gear set, but... I mean, that's still pretty damn good. <laughs> So there you have it. We were able to clarify a little bit on her abilities and we were able to check out a little bit of what she can do and I gotta say she seems actually kind of really fun to play as a, a mage. I don't think most mages are very fun necessarily to play but this seems pretty nice and uh, yeah she seems like a very great unit and I think that about covers most of what I wanted to say. Mostly I just wanted to end on the note that I Due to those shop rewards I really do think that we have a very strong chance of getting this next week after the Rommel banner. Again, I don't think that they dropped uh, the Christmas banner just yet because, like I said, they st I think they still want to push out the units in a kind of timely manner over in Global so they can slowly catch us up over here so that way they can kind of keep releasing banners at the same time without having to worry about people complaining about power creep. So that's just my two cents, and uh, that's about it. If you guys do want to talk about the Christmas whatnots down in the comments below or have any questions, feel free to leave them down there. And uh, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.